Hey guys, this is Ryan. Today we are going through the motorcycle helmet guide uh, and we're going to start with the different types of motorcycle helmets. So what you can expect from each, the riders that are going to be, uh, be into each kind of motorcycle helmet, uh, and a couple key things to look for from each category. So we'll start with that, keep going through it, and uh, later on we'll get to the different sections as well. So let's get started. All right, so right off the bat, we're going to start with the full face. So this is probably what you have in mind uh, when you think of a motorcycle helmet. It basically refers to full coverage. So you got coverage here on the top of your head, the back, on both sides, uh, and most importantly here on the front with this chin bar. This is what really makes it a full face helmet. 45% of motorcycle crashes are going to involve an impact at some point on this chin bar. So if you are concerned about safety, it's important to have that for sure. Full face helmets uh, are going to vary a lot depending on the riding position you choose. So if you're an ADV rider, if you're a tour or a cruiser rider, you have that upright stance, the helmet's going to have to complement that. So one thing it's going to do is it's going to have a chin bar that extends a little bit lower just to get that exposed portion of your neck covered. The eye port is going to extend basically neutrally straight ahead as you would be looking, and you're going to get ventilation towards the front of the helmet here, which is where the most airflow is going to be. Now if we do this, that's what you're going to get from someone who's entering a tuck position. This is your really, really aggressive sport rider. Again here, you're going to see the opposite of what we had before. So the chin bar is probably going to be a little bit higher on your face, just because you're going to be bent over like that. The eye port is going to be extended towards the top of the helmet uh, in relative turns, because you're going to be looking ahead uh, just like that. And you're going to get more ventilation here on the top of the head as well, because that's where most of the airflow is going to be coming in now. And the other thing that's really important about full face helmets is this face shield here. Um, so choosing the color for this is really, really important. Clear ones are going to be great for anyone who does a bit of night riding. Um, the yellow and rose tinted visors are great for anyone who's in cloudy conditions or if you ride in a lot of fog. If you're an ADV rider and you do a lot of mountain riding, this is something you might be thinking about. Uh, the dark, sort of a light smoke colored visor, that's going to be great for someone who rides uh, in bright conditions. And the really dark mirrored or uh, pitch black sort of blackout visors, those have to be taken with caution. They're great for bright conditions, but you have to be aware of things like tunnels, because if you go into one of those, you could just smack into a wall because you'll be instantly blind when you go in there with something like that. One way to get good versatility, like on this showy, uh, is with a drop down sun visor. So this is one way that you can get uh, a little bit of the best of both worlds there. You may also want to pay attention to UV protection. Uh, these will often have a rating that goes along with it, so if you have sensitive eyes to that kind of thing, uh, it could be something to look for, for sure. Obviously, uh, the benefit to full face helmets is the, perfect, uh, is, is the protection, uh, and the downside to them is going to be the heat. You're locked in there, so it's going to be hot, it's going to be stuffy, uh, especially in warm temperatures. So if you live in a hot climate, be sure to look for something that's going to have a lot of ventilation with it, for sure. If you're a really, really sweaty guy and you tend to sweat a lot on your face, uh, then find a visor that's going to have uh, an anti-fogging coating on it as well. That could be really important. So moving on from these, we're going to look at a modular helmet. Now this looks similar to the last one, right? It looks like we're talking about the exact same thing, and in many ways we are, but of course it is going to be a transformer. So you're not supposed to ride in this position. Uh, this is going to turn your head into a windsock if you try to do it. Uh, and it looks kind of conehead and dorky anyway. But when you're pulled over at, uh, at a traffic light, or if you want to stop on the side of the road, read a map, have a smoke, talk to your friends, whatever you got to do, these are a really, really convenient option for that for sure. Modular helmets are very popular with ADV riders, with sport tours, with cruisers. Um, so a lot of people who are in that upright position, so it's really common to see them uh, designed to be ridden just like this. It's more rare to find a modular helmet that's meant to be in that aggressive tuck position, although there are a few options. The Bell Revolver would be a really, really good one to look at if you are looking for a sportier modular helmet. The last thing to note with these is that they're inherently just a little bit less safe than a full face helmet, and that's just because the hinge mechanism uh, just introduces a little bit of a break in what would otherwise be a totally uniform one-piece structure. So that's a little bit less strength in this, but obviously it's going to be way better than like an open face helmet or half helmet where you have no lower face coverage at all. 
So we're going to move on from there and look at something like this, which is an open face helmet. So these are also called three quarter helmets. And the reason for that is because you have essentially three quarter coverage. So you're covered here on the top of the head, you're covered here on the back, you got the sides as well. Obviously you don't have anything in the front. So these are really, really popular with, uh, with cruisers, with scooter riders. They're especially popular with anyone who rides a vintage bike. So if you're on a cafe racer, if you're on a historical machine at all, uh, this is going to look really, really cool on there because it is more of a traditional motorcycling helmet. Uh, safety wise, I'm going to say that these are structurally equal to something like a full face. And by that, I mean where they are covered, the shell and the EPS foam beneath and the padding, that's all going to be similar as you would get in a standard full face. So if you get hit back here, you're going to be just as safe. So while they're structurally uh, equal to a, a full face helmet in terms of safety, they're not equal, obviously, in terms of coverage. So you're good back here in the front, obviously you have less. But the benefit of that, of course, is you got that airy feel, you got the wind in your face, you know, you're not stuffed up like you would be with a full face helmet. Um, the downside, of course, is weather. You know, if you can get the air in your face, then you can also get the bees, you can get the rain, you can get the hail. So you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure that you're protected from that. For some people, that means goggles, could mean glasses, could mean a bandana. Um, it could mean just growing a massive beard, you know, you got to decide for yourself what you want to do with that, but there's a lot of options. We come to the next step, which is a half helmet. So obviously this is about half coverage and by half, I mean the top half of your head. So you got the top half of the back, the sides, the top, the front, but you're not going to be covered anywhere sort of below that ear level. These are also called brain buckets. They're really, really popular for people who ride Harley Davidson's for cruisers. Even on some sort of aggressive uh, street fighter bikes or naked bikes, you'll see these helmets cropping up. Now they are DOT rated, so they're legal on Canadian roads. Um, but I wouldn't say that these are structurally equal um, in terms of safety to something like a full face, even where there is coverage. Because a lot of time manufacturers are really focused on meeting uh, the DOT rating with the least possible volume, with the least possible weight. So with this, you're really looking at more lightweight. You're not gonna get the same amount of protection on the top side as you would uh, with like a full face helmet. And of course, you're gonna have less coverage all around. The benefit to that uh, is that iconic style. It's that freedom ethos of motorcycling. You know, you're totally out there in the elements. You have awesome airflow with this. Um, you know, you may need a bandana or, or glasses or goggles, but the airflow is really, you can't compare with the true half helmet. It's really, really great. Some models like the Bell Rogue will even have a muzzle that'll come out over your face uh, and handle some of that coverage for you. So it's definitely something to check out if that's something that interests you. Moving on from there, we go towards the dirt side. This is a, uh, a dual sport helmet. These will also be called crossover helmets, enduro helmets. Um, and basically they're meant to be ridden sort of 50% on the road, 50% off. And you can really see that just by looking at it. It looks kind of like the love child between a full face helmet and, uh, and an off-road or motocross helmet, right? You have that uh, sun visor here, um, but it's not quite as pronounced and it's gonna be aerodynamic um, to avoid helmet lift at highway speeds. In the same way, you have this angular chin bar, but it's a little bit truncated. It's brought in a little bit and that's gonna add to warmth. It's gonna decrease the airflow a little bit and bring better soundproofing to it. So it's right in the middle of the two, you know, you're going to have soundproofing, you're going to have warmth, but not as much as you would get from standard on-road full face. In the same way, you're going to have airflow, it's going to be lightweight, but not as much as a traditional motocross helmet. One thing to note with this one that's uh, particularly important is with this visor up, uh, you can actually use goggles beneath it as well. So that gives you great versatility. Um, if you're just doing a ride where you uh, ride to the trailhead and you're going to be off-road all day, then it's a great option to be able to put goggles under this and you're going to get closer to that true motocross feel. Uh, and if you're doing more 50-50 riding, you flip the visor down, you have a great functional helmet for that as well. Lastly, we're going to look at this. This is a full-on dirt helmet, uh, really meant for that environment. Uh, you have a really, really pronounced uh, sun visor. This is going to keep the sun out of your eyes. It's going to prevent that mile-high roost from coming down towards your eye port as well. The chin bar is way out there, it's totally angular, and this is great for allowing airflow to come up in, inside. So this whole thing really is geared towards two ends, and that's minimizing weight and um, maximizing airflow. 
So the whole design is really geared towards that. That's important because off-road riding is really, really physical. It's really aggressive. You're going to be sweating a lot. It's done in really, really hot temperatures normally and at relatively slow speeds. So it's important to have that lightweight. It's important to have that airflow. You'll notice obviously in the iPort, it's meant to be used with goggles. One thing to note with this is that if you want a really perfect interface between your goggles and your helmet, it'd be a great idea to buy uh, the same manufacturer for each. So this is a Thor helmet. They're a big time dirt manufacturer. And of course they also make goggles. So if you're gonna do this, you know, buy the Thor lid and then get the Thor goggles that the OEM suggests to go with that helmet because you're gonna get like a really flawless fit from that. Um, so that's an important thing to note with their helmets as well. These will often be a little bit cheaper than the other ones um, just because there's less going on and they don't have to worry about soundproofing and all that stuff. So that's the last helmet we looked at and that's a way to tell the difference between them all, a couple things to look for. So with that, you should be well armed to go out and decide what kind you want to look for and go from there. In the next section, we're going to look at how to get the proper fit. So once you have an idea of what helmet you want, be sure to read the next section, our motorcycle helmet guide, and we'll help you out with that as well. Thank you for watching.